So, uh, yeah, like, like, like he said, my name is Matthew Reed. Um, wasn't quite sure how I wanted to put this together, but I've been building for a while. So I thought the most valuable thing I could do is just share that journey. Um, we'll talk about the title later. So you can find me on Twitter, at Blurden. Um, and then kind of just want to dive in a little bit where I'm coming from. Uh, born and raised in Ohio. Um, it's been 20 years there. It's a good place to grow up. And I ended up getting into art and went off to California to go to Art Center, which was a um, really great school, but a lot of student loan debt. Um, and then they had a fellowship with Caltech, which was really cool. So you had some creative minds mashing with the uh, more scientific minds. And I'll talk a little bit more about that too. It'll, you'll see how the journey goes. And then ultimately I ended up in Boulder with my wife and looking to just find a better living for the kid that we just had. So, But it's been great. It kind of lined up with COVID and you know the way the world works, you, you're able to keep all these relationships and keep, keep everything moving. It was like nothing ever happened. And I was really surprised to meet the crypto community here as well. I, I had no idea how thriving it was, and it's been pretty awesome. Um, so I kind of split this presentation into mind, body, and soul, but that's more about work, less about literal mind, body, and soul. And to talk about how maybe my mind was shaped, it started with Ron Paul, like a lot of people, I think, that are in the crypto world. There was an old man on stage that was just fighting for principle. And I thought that was pretty interesting. And he led to a lot of thinking about monetary reform in my mind, which led to this gentleman, Richard C. Cook, um, who had, he was an analyst for the White House and um, for NASA and started working on monetary reform himself um, and speaking to how it could be reformed. And you started hearing words like universal basic income, social dividends, all this interesting stuff that makes your mind go, whoa, maybe there is a way to get out of this debt-based world that we live in. So I started writing emails back to the, you know, the fellowship at Caltech. I found this guy named Virgil and wrote a diatribe about how this needs to be. You know, Richard was a great guy, but he wasn't thinking about how it could just be put into a digital form and, and come to life. So I wrote a really long email and got a very short response from this guy named Virgil. I didn't know at the time. He said, just look into Bitcoin. And that's Virgil, who you guys might know. And I had more conversations with him about colored coins, because as I started to go down the rabbit hole, I got excited about the possibilities. And colored coins were a pretty, pretty phenomenal idea that I threw back at him. And he said he didn't know much about it. Evaluation of a currency system isn't my forte, but we all know that he went in to really dig into some stuff from there. Um, but where my mind started to get excited was one, uh, you know, these are all places I think everybody's starting to dive into. Um, this idea of voter fraud in the middle there, the idea of colored coins over there on the right. And then I think something that maybe hasn't hit yet, but uh, localized currencies where the power that could be just because we can tell where you're at and maybe that extra layer over top of a currency might get interesting. And maybe it's been done, I just haven't been following. So then it goes into the body where this is more like the body of work that I've, or the journey I've taken with work. Um, been working with these guys out of Brooklyn, New York called Double Day and Cartwright that are amazing creative group that you know, because I love art, kind of sticks to that world of just putting things out that are a little more art worthy, right? And out into the world. Um, and then I got to work with this guy for a year and a half. Um, he has big vision, really tough to work with, but I love him. He was a good guy. Um, you know, he wanted to build the future of e-commerce and we took it to task. Um, and it was rough. I think coming out of that, I had a little post-traumatic stress. So we built something called Naismith Labs while we were there with them because Doubleday had an, uh, had an agreement with Nike where we couldn't really be doing other stuff. And of course, in the world of Kanye, 
Adidas starts to creep in. So we created Nate Smith Labs, which was really just going to be a skunk works um, place that we were going to get creative, and we did fun stuff for a while because I had sea legs, like I said, coming out of that camp. And we just played with optical reflections and mirrors and this type of fun stuff that's probably ripe for the metaverse at this point. Although I don't know if I'd go down the optical reflection route. And if any of you know anything about that, please contact me. Um, and then finally, so this is where we get into what this was originally called. It's the products that I've been building. It's like where my heart wanted to go with all this stuff. So um, you had this thing called black market we created. And it was a little bit before NFTs, but it had NFTs in it. Um, and it's still, it's still being built. We're just retooling because after the big atom bomb of last year went off with NFTs, we were doing it different. And we're deciding, hey, let's go back in and retool this. So, but all along, Doubleday, all these things I've been around, it's about culture commerce. It's about people dropping stuff and getting noticed. And it's about exclusivity. In real life, participation is a big piece of it. So I think the group I've been blessed to be with has shown us that it's important to nurture the, the groups that you're, you're catering to, right? Um, so Black Market was this location sensitive, it was kind of inspired by the autonomy of uh, the Apple store, right? Where you could walk in and walk out and it was pretty, pretty amazing experience. But we wanted artist brands and others to have that power where you could set up ad hoc locations, um, pop-up shops, and sell physical goods. The example we always used, which is a little antiquated now, was you could imagine at Staples Center or Crypto.com Center now, um, they would have a memorial for Kobe, and because you come in proximity, you have this opportunity to buy these things and contribute to those things. But that wasn't where it stopped, because it could go all around to the YMCA's that he supported over LA, and those pop-up shops could sell the same thing and start to nurture back to those funds that Kobe was there for. Um, and then the NFTs were there. If people were coming to the games, could they get, I mean, this isn't Top Shop, but this was the idea that if they're coming to the game, can they collect the player tokens and get them all, right? But it was expensive, and it was not working exactly the way we wanted. So that gets us to now. The, the new baby that came out of the oven is Black Drop. And basically, it was just stepping back to say what everybody was saying at the time, faster, cheaper, cleaner, right? Um, but then we also needed to be more inclusive. We, we want to include the no-coiners. We want to make it easy to understand for people to log in and not have it be overly complex to jump from a wallet to an exchange, although we're still working on that. And we also felt the EMV compatibility was super important. But we also knew we needed help. So there's an amazing gentleman out of the Denver community, uh, James Young, who stepped up, helped a lot. Um, his team was priceless in all this. Um, the Near Foundation, uh, we got a lot of support from them. And this is, this is the protocol we chose to go with to help us kind of do that. The, uh, what do you call it, a layer one in disguise? operating with layer two. So what we, what, we def what we ended up aiming for was a bespoke NFT ecosystem that still cherished community experience design, right? We're not, trying to, we're not just trying to put out 10,000 PFP tokens and, and have people flock in. It was really going to be, well, what community are we starting with here and how do we nurture it to grow into something much bigger? And so we found a, a great partner out of Detroit called One Time Run, who's been dropping original artwork or printed physical artwork over the web for the past decade. And so we, we latched onto them pretty good. I mean, we had done some previous work, but they were very interested in getting inside of this, this space. And it, was, it felt like a glove because NFTs are great for, for artwork. I mean, it is really cool, the idea that you could have a printed piece and a companion so they were really all gangbusters for this, and that's, that's kind of where we're at. And what we decided to do was help them um, create a Genesis card to kind of nurture that group that was there in the beginning, the people that they told, hey, let's, this is new for us, but let's hop on our Discord channel. And then they experimented with some other things, and the Genesis card was basically a gift that said, 
if you you know if you join us, you're gonna you're gonna see some benefits to having holding this card. And with the Genesis card, we wrote in what would be maybe the beginning of a DAO, which is not formally one, but it's informally one, where the Genesis card makes sure that, well, actually through the platform at large, there is a 1x fund where 1% of all royalties are gonna flow into that for arts in general. And as that formalizes, these Genesis card holders will, people, will be stakeholders that get to vote into that system. And the second part was called what we called rare drops, in which um, it was kind of like our spin of you gotta you gotta keep reality in it and this idea of first Fridays, which are endemic to art communities, right? So while our first rare drop wasn't on a first Friday, it will be from here on out. And the idea is that we will discover up and coming artists and put them out there in the world where um, where that will drop to the people who are Genesis card holders and be made available to the broader market. Um, and then the idea of companion NFTs, which I was talking about, was just in general, these artists that one time run have really long relationships with will continue to do their physical drops on there, but now they have this opportunity to add the NFT to it. It's not like they have to stay together. We don't know where this goes from here. But the idea is that now they have this extra lever to pull and try out and get into the group. And we also want to start to pull digital natives into One Time Run, because dig because One Time Run has always been about the sort of traditional artists, and that's in quotes. And what they really want to do is start to pull in these digital natives and see if they can start to do prints for them as well. So that's kind of a little glimpse of the One Time Run limited card. Here's the first rare drop we did with an artist named Natural and we experimented with different levels of rarity. There's actually nine of these, some that are daytime, dusk, and midnight. They're quite beautiful. And then, you know, just to kind of give you a little picture of it, like if, if the intention with black drop was to be white label, which is not really the word that we use because we, we're trying to do more than just like slap a label on it and help these people. We want to get a little more endemic with the audience and help out. But the marketplace is there. Um, and the artist profiles and their artwork will build up beneath it as they release. The portfolios there are, for, are there for our users. We figured out a way for people to, it's almost a web 2.5 using Taurus and uh, web three auth to allow people to log in without a password with their email and then get a, and then we'll generate a wallet for them, a non-custodial wallet for them on the fly. So our users onboard pretty quick. They have a wallet that comes with them. We give them a way to back it up. We teach them a little bit along the way. And so, you know, the future for us, we're excited that this is out there now and we want to offer Black Drop to more brands and more, more communities as we go. Um, the future of One Time Run, Dot Limited, is this idea of wallets to walls. Like, really, the journey is always about having the vision that you can lean back into when things get hard, right? Because it took me, I mean, 10 plus years to get here in the crypto community, being a holder and then finally deciding to build. But just building this alone in black market took a long time to get here. So the vision for One Time Run has always been, when is that time when we get the artwork up on the walls that's digital and the NFTs can display there? And not only that, like, because I have this dream in my living room of having like a giant beautiful landscape of you know, the Colorado Front Range or something. And maybe it begins to, the sun rises and sets with the actual day or something like that. The art is alive. Well, then composability comes in. Is there a point where I can buy, I can buy a bundle of wood through One Time Run that I can actually give to the cowboy in the work of art that will start a fire that night or something? Does the work come to life like that? And then this idea of private key prints. So it's just if the, if the NFT can travel and one time run has a really great relationship with kind of and know how to, to get these fine art prints out there, how does the private key of a digital piece go back to the physical world? It shouldn't be that hard with this group. And just that, that permission and that legal construct is there that the person who owns it at that moment has that ability to print that print, put it up on their wall, frame it. And so that's kind of it where where Black Drop is, and I think, uh, I think it's exciting to finally have a product out there. Like I said, we're only this past month have been live. 
Um, the idea is that what we learn from Black Drop gets fed back into Black Market, and Black Market becomes a really active, localized marketplace. Uh, one of the cooler features of Black Market is we, could, we can make NFTs rain over a particular geofenced area. So people can just walk around and collect them, I and you couldn't do that so effectively with, with Ethereum. But now with, with near protocol kind of underpinning all this for us, at least, it's pretty seamless and fast and, and pretty impressive. And so I guess I end with what the fuck is 99 Red Bullings. And I, I just kind of get caught off guard when people are expecting utility out of NFTs or crypto when to me it's just so evident, you know. And I looked at um, NFTs as sort of like a true or false. You either have it or you don't. And that little gateway is kind of like so powerful. We know how powerful ones and zeros are. I mean, there's so much built on that. So I just kind of looked serendipitously at the sort of like the la outro of the song to kind of say, 99 dreams I have had and every one a red balloon, it's all over and I'm standing pretty in this dust that was a city. It has a lot of political and war overture to it. But what I was pointing out here is if I could find a souvenir just to prove the world was here and here's a red balloon I think of you and let go, that's kind of NFT in a sense, right? This, this provable artifact that kind of floats around and that's why I named it that. <laughs> and that's really it. I thank you.